Jason really liked her, and he was like, okay, I promise I'll take you back to Greece, and I promise that I won't cheat on you. And she was like, wow, I'm in love. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Liana. If you're new, and welcome to episode 8 of Makeup in Mythology, a series I'm doing on my channel where I do my makeup and also tell you an ancient myth. Last time we covered the Greek god of the sea, Poseidon, and how he was very greedy and largely unsuccessful with his pursuits, and just the less hot and less popular version of Zeus, and you know, that was kind of it. For this episode, we are covering the Greek hero, Jason. I feel like he is kind of lesser known than Hercules or Perseus, but uh, you know, his story is equally interesting, and this is how it goes. So Jason's father was named Aeson. I know, it's really funny. And Aeson was the rightful king of the city of Iolcus, but he was usurped by his half-brother Peleus. Now Peleus' backstory is rather interesting. While Aeson was born to King Cretheus and Queen Tyro of Iolcus, Peleus was actually born to Queen Tyro and Poseidon. Now although Tyro was married to King Cretheus, she was madly in love with a river god, Enipeus. She wanted him, but he didn't really care about her. And Poseidon, knowing this fact, was like, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Oh god, he's such a dirty bastard. And he disguised himself as Enipeus and lay with her. And uh, from their union, Peleus and his brother Neleus were born. Peleus and Neleus. Jason and Aeson. Probably because she didn't want to incite the anger of her husband, the king, she left the boys Peleus and Neleus on a mountain to die. And uh, they were rescued by a herdsman. In some other versions, they were raised by a maid. When they reached adulthood, Peleus and Neleus found their mother Tyro, and then they killed Tyro's stepmother, Sidero, because Sidero was a bitch to Tyro. So I guess they weren't that mad that their mother left them out to die. Anyway, when they were trying to kill Sidero, Sidero hid in a temple dedicated to the goddess Hera, and Peleus killed her there. This incited the scorn of Hera, who saw this as the ultimate disrespect. Now Peleus was really power hungry, so much so that he banished his own blood brother Neleus from the city so that he wouldn't have any competition for power. When he usurped Aeson, he put Aeson and his wife in prison, and uh, that is where Jason, our main character, was conceived. Because, you know, prison. Prison is so romantic. To protect Jason from Peleus, Aeson arranged for Jason to be secretly raised by the centaur Chiron, and under his care, Jason grew into a young man. Of course, this story has an oracle in it. Peleus had learned that he would be killed by a kinsman, and that he must be wary of any stranger who wears a single sandal. And Peleus, not knowing about Jason, was just like, who could this man be? I already got rid of everyone who's a threat to me. But of course, Peleus did not feel safe. So for years, he feared this mystery single-sandaled man. When Jason turned 21, he decided that he would claim the kingship of Iolcus because it was rightfully his. And on his way to Iolcus, he had to cross a river. And at the river was an old woman who asked him to carry her to the other side. This old woman was Hera in disguise. She wanted to test him to see if he was worthy to help her destroy Peleus, who had scorned her years before by killing that lady in her temple. And while crossing the river with the old lady on his back, Jason lost a sandal. So when he appeared before Peleus, he was only wearing one sandal. <gasps> so Jason said to Peleus, I, son of Aeson, want the kingship. You can keep all of your money and stuff, but I just want to be king because the throne is rightfully mine. And Peleus, afraid to kill him outright, was like, okay. Hey man, totally unrelated, but uh, what would you ask of the man who was destined to kill you? And Jason was like, well, I don't know. I'd ask him to get the Golden Fleece from Colchis, I guess. And Peleus was like, brilliant. Why don't you go get it for me? And uh, you can have the kingship. And Jason agreed. And Peleus felt safe because he assumed that the brash young man would never return from this dangerous adventure. Now the backstory of this Golden Fleece is rather interesting. Once there was a king, Athamas. And King Athamas divorced his first wife to marry another. His second wife, Eno, wanted to get rid of his two children from his previous marriage because she wanted her own children. And you know, she didn't just want to like kill them, otherwise her husband was gonna be mad at her. So she hatched a plan. She burned the entire town's crop seeds so that none of them would grow. And the farmers were like, oh shit, is this a famine? Well, let's go to an oracle and see what we should do. And so they sent a few men to go to the oracle, and Eno bribed these men to lie and say that the only solution to the famine was to sacrifice the king's children. And King Athamas was like, oh man, really? My kids? But because of his kingly duties to his people, he reluctantly agreed for his kids to be sacrificed. And as the children were about to be sacrificed, Hermes, likely under the direction of Zeus, sent a golden ram to rescue them. 
this ram saved the boy, Phrixus, and his sister, Hele, and flew into the sky. At one point, Hele lost her grip and fell into the river, but Phrixus survived. The ram took him to Colchis, where he was taken in by King Aedes, and on Thanksgiving, Phrixus sacrificed the golden ram as a thank you to Zeus for saving his life. And thereafter, the ram's golden fleece was hung in a sacred grove, guarded by a scary dragon. So anyway, going back to Jason, he was going to go and get this golden fleece, so he commissioned a ship to be built so that he could go to Colchis and get it. He called this ship the Argo and sent word to every court in Greece that he wanted volunteers to go with him on his adventure. And lots of adventure seekers joined him. And uh, because the ship was called the Argo, they called themselves the Argonauts. A lot of heroes joined him in his expedition, and among them were Hercules, Castor, and Polydeuces. Their first stop was Lemnus, an island where the women had killed all their men except one uh, in a fit of rage. But after a year without men, you know, they were kind of horny, so... <laughs> They welcomed the Argonauts and uh, slept with them and gave them food and gifts and, uh, you know, drinks and stuff. So it was a good time. And it was here that Hercules actually lost his squire, Hylas, who had fallen into a spring trying to chase a nymph that he was attracted to. So Hercules had to go look for stupid Hylas, and uh, he didn't return, so the Argo left without him. They managed to slip past the city of Troy, because uh, they didn't want to pay tribute to King Laomedon. Oh shit, I put too much. And uh, Polydeuces actually had to box somebody to death there. But, uh, you know, that's not what this story is about. And after that, the Argonauts arrived at a place where these harpies, these fierce bird-like females, were plaguing a seer, Phineas, who had offended Zeus. The harpies would swoop down at every meal that Phineas had prepared for himself and basically just ruin it so that he didn't have any food to eat. So two of the Argonauts, who for some reason could fly, were able to take on the harpies and get rid of them for Phineas. And Phineas, out of gratitude, foretold all that would happen to the Argonauts on their way to Colchis. And because of this, they were able to pass between the Simplicades, aka the Clashing Rocks, without any mishap. So, that's good. Eventually, several cities later, they finally got to Colchis, and uh, they went directly to King Aedes to try to ask him for the fleece. But they were greeted with hostility, because the Colchians hated the Greeks. And Jason was like, please, your majesty, please, we'll do anything. No, actually, Jason was pretty... Jason was very cool about it. He was very calm. He was like, look, man, we'll do anything. What will it take for you to give me the golden fleece? And Aedes was like, fine. If you want it so bad, go yoke two fire-breathing bulls, plow a huge field that belongs to Ares, and sow the furrows with dragon's teeth. Then I'll give you the freaking fleece. And Jason was like, okay. <laughs> Now, if you remember, Jason had Hera backing him up because she wanted to destroy Peleus for killing that woman in her temple. So Hera arranged that Aedes' daughter, Medea, would fall madly in love with Jason and help him. Now, the princess Medea was very, very pretty, and she was also a sorceress. Jason really liked her, and he was like, Okay, I promise I'll take you back to Greece, and I promise that I won't cheat on you. And she was like, Wow, I'm in love. So she gave him a magic ointment that would enable him to conquer the bulls and uh, plow the field, and also told him a very important secret, the secret of defeating the crop of warriors that would sprout from the dragon's teeth. And the very next day, Jason yoked the bulls, plowed the field, and sowed the teeth. And when the armed warriors sprang from the teeth, Jason threw a stone into their midst and they just destroyed each other. So, you know, that was kind of easy. <laughs> but of course, King Aedes was like, no, God damn it! I'm not giving you the fleece! That night, Medea led the men there, and uh, she charmed the dragon that was guarding the fleece to sleep. And Jason took the fleece from the tree and hurried back to his ship with his men and took Medea with him to be his mistress. If I was Medea and I just betrayed my whole family to help this guy and he only made me his mistress, I would be so mad. I would be so mad. But I guess she was okay with being his mistress. Especially because he was like, oh, you know, I'm never gonna cheat on you. I'm gonna love you and only you. Also, it was because of Chinese dramas that I learned that you can have a mistress before having a wife. <laughs> Ancient Chinese men be wild and... Not long after they set sail, they were cornered by the Colchian fleet, led by Medea's brother, Absyrtus. And to save Jason, Medea wrote to her brother, saying that she had been kidnapped, and that if he met her in a secret spot, then she would bring back the Golden Fleece and also go back with him. And when Aspiritus met Medea, Jason stepped out of the darkness and slew him. And without his leadership, the Colchian fleet was dispersed, and uh, the Argonauts were able to get away. In another version, Medea kidnapped her brother aboard the 
Argo, and then she killed him there. When King Aedes pursued the Argo, Medea would cut part of her brother's corpse off and fling it into the sea, and King Aedes would be forced to stop to look for the severed member because he didn't want his son's ghost to haunt him. And in this way, they were able to get away from the Colchian navy. That is really, really dark. But yeah, Absurdus dies either way. Having just killed her brother, Jason and Medea had to purify themselves. So they went to the sorceress Circe, who purged them. So I guess guilt assuaged. Their trip back was rather dangerous, but with the help of Hera and Medea's powers, they returned to Greece at last. And the Argonauts disbanded. Each of them returned to their individual homes. When Jason returned, he found that King Peleus had put his mother and father to death and forced them to commit suicide in jail by drinking bull's blood, which, you know, apparently is poisonous. And also Peleus was not intending on giving up the throne. So Medea devised a plan for revenge, and with Jason's approval, she told King Peleus and his daughters that she had the power to rejuvenate men. And Peleus, who was getting super old and decrepit, was really, really interested. To prove her power, she cut up an old ram, threw it into a boiling cauldron, and put in some magic herbs, and out of the cauldron came a frisky lamb. And uh, so Peleus was like, oh, you know, I want to do that. Medea then persuaded Peleus' daughters to cut him up and put him in the pot. And of course, this killed him. In another version, Jason's father, Aeson, was actually alive for this part, and Medea slit his throat and then brought him back to life as a younger version of himself. So she convinced Peleus' daughters to do the same to Peleus, and uh, then she just refused to bring him back. And because of the mischief that they had caused, Jason and Medea were forced to leave Iolcus, and uh, Jason did not get to rule. From there, they went to a different city, where they hung the Golden Fleece in a temple of Zeus, and eventually they moved to Corinth, where they had two kids. However, Jason was getting pretty bored of Medea, and he was looking for a more suitable mate. So, uh, you know, his original words of, I'm only gonna love you, meant nothing. <laughs> so he was looking to get married to the king of Corinth's daughter, Glauci. And when Medea heard this, she was like, fuck no, you're getting married to that bitch? After every everything we've been through, and uh, her outburst caused her to be exiled from the city. And you know, Jason just didn't give a shit. He was like, you know, you and I, we had a good run. Bye-bye now. And uh, Matea was like, how could you? And uh, she was very, very heartbroken over Jason's coldness. She was very determined to get revenge, and honestly, I would be too. So she prepared a beautiful garment for Jason's bride and enchanted it so that when she put it on, her flesh burned away and she died in agony. Medea's kind of like, scary. Knowing that life in exile would be hard on her boys, Medea killed her boys and managed to escape Jason's wrath in a flying chariot drawn by dragons. Now, that is what I call an exit. You may not agree with everything she's done, but, you know, that is one hell of an exit. Eventually, as time passed, Jason lost Hera's favor, uh, cause you know, she got what she wanted, Peleus was dead, his one crowning achievement, getting the Golden Fleece, was done and passed. He peaked, and although his marriage to Glauci allowed him to become the king of Corinth, he no longer had any children, and, uh, you know, getting the Golden Fleece was like his one thing that he did, and so his life became really empty. And one day, when he was brooding under the prow of the Argo, reminiscing on the good old days, its beam fell on him, killing him. That's the story. The end. So, um, you know, the moral of the story is that if you're gonna take a sorceress as a wife, don't fucking make her mad. Don't do it. And also, don't peek in high school. <laughs> So yeah, that was very, very depressing, but also a very interesting story. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!